Pole fishing is without a doubt the number one tactic here in the UK and for good reason. It is a brilliant way to catch loads of fish, whether you're targeting big carp in the margins, roach on the far side of the canal, it's just a fantastic way to fish. And better still, it's simple. But the number one reason why pole fishing is so much better and more effective than rod and line fishing is the accuracy that it gives you. The accuracy when you're feeding, the accuracy with your rigs, the accuracy with your rig placement. But the number one reason why I believe that pole fishing is so much more effective is the accuracy when plumbing up. You can get everything incredibly precise when pole fishing, something that just isn't, you just cannot achieve it when fishing a waggler or a stick float or something like that. So I want to give you some easily overlooked tips to help you with your plumbing up. It's something that is easily just overlooked. We, we sometimes just take it for granted. I'm gonna give you some simple tips that you can take away to hopefully improve your pole fishing and more importantly, your plumbing up accuracy. Now we're gonna give you several tips throughout this little video to help you with your plumbing up. But the first one is plummet choice. Now this is not, you've got to have this plummet, but I just wanna show you what you need to look for in a good plummet. Now, the first one is a nice wide, flat base something that's going to stick now on commercial fisheries canals you often get steep slopes slopes on the inside even if they're not that steep gentle slopes you want something that's going to sit on that slope and give you a positive reading this one has a nice wide base and it's absolutely perfect the benefit of the cyclops plummet is it's got a massive eye so with modern fishing techniques when we're using banded pellet hair rigs all sorts of like setups like that the big eye on the Cyclops allows you to pass that through dead easy so you don't have to take the band off your rig to get it through and plumb up. So just a simple thing there, but it's very, very effective. Also, look for a plummet that's got a nice, soft foam. A lot of them have cork. Cork's fine, but make sure it's a decent depth. The last thing you want to be doing is putting your hook in there and it touching the actual um, weight of the plummet, the hard surface, and it potentially blunting your hook. So just something to think about, a small detail. These have got a nice, soft foam that doesn't like wear out or anything like that but importantly, keeps those hooks nice and tack sharp. The next point I wanna tell you about is the actual plummet size itself. Now there's loads on the market, ranging from little, tiny little 10 gram ones up to 60, 70 gram ones that they use in Europe on big rivers. But for our fishing here in the UK, a lot of commercial fishing, two sizes are pretty much gonna do you. The 30 gram is probably your all round size, and then the 45 gram has a use as well, and it's one that I use an awful lot. They've got different purposes. The 30 gram, like I say, is your all round one but you've got to consider what you're plumbing up on. And this obviously become, this comes from um, knowledge of your venue and previous experience. Here at Shearsby Valley, I know that I'm fishing on a lake that's got a very firm clay bottom. So I can get away with using the heavy 45 gram to get myself a nice positive reading. However, if I was fishing an old estate lake, an old club lake, something that's been there for years, I've got to assume that there's a lot of silt buildup in there. And a lot of the commercial fisheries around the country have got this silt buildup as well. That is where the 30 gram comes in, because if you were to use a 45 gram, for example, it would sink into the silt, get stuck and give you a false reading. So you may actually be fishing deeper than the actual swim is because the plummet has sunk into the silt. So a bit of experience and knowledge about your venue is really important to help you choose which plummet you can use. Now, when it comes to say margin fishing, fishing up against islands, stuff like that, I personally love to use the 45 gram one because oftentimes when I'm fishing in the edge or something like that short pole, I'm using heavy elastics. And one of the best ways to help you read the swim is actually having a little bit of elastic out of your pole tip. And you can see when it touches the bottom, the elastic goes in inside your pole because obviously it's, it's hitting the bottom and, and taking the tension off the, off the setup. That 30 gram doesn't actually do that with the heavier elastics, the green and blue zip, whereas a 45 gram is still heavy enough to get a few inches of elastic out of your pole tip and allow you to get that positive reading. So just because it's a big plummet, you might look at it and think, oh, that's too big, way too big, but it has got a use and it's one that I turn to over and over again. But what I will say is, if you just want one plummet that will do you for everything, the 30 gram is what you want. It gives you a nice positive reading, whether you're fishing on silt, whether you're fishing short, whether you're fishing in the edge. The 30 grammar works for just about everything. So there you go, two sizes of plummets that I carry. They have got a use, like I say, the 45 gram for your thicker elastics, hard bottoms, 30 gram for your all round use. Those two sizes, carry one of each of them, you won't go far wrong. Okay, so let's talk about the plumbing up itself, the actual process of plumbing up, and the details that you need to consider to make sure that you're fishing as accurately as you can, and effectively as you can, which is the most important thing. Now, I've fished this venue dozens of times, 
and I know for a fact that it starts very shallow in the edge, probably 18 inches or so, and it works its way out. You've got a nice gradual slope, so where I'm going to fish today is top kit in two sections, which is a distance that I know most of you will probably fish week in, week out. There's a good reason for that. It's a very, very effective place to fish. It's the right depth for the fish to feel comfortable. But I know that this lake, it just gradually gets deeper and deeper until it flattens off at about 11 meters where it's about six to seven foot. Now, I've purposely sat in a corner here today just to give you a bit of a scenario that you need to find with your plummet. And this is the reason why I like to use a heavy plummet if I can. Um, you've got to imagine this lake has got a, um, the shallow shelf, the slope, if you like, and it goes all the way around the lake. So because the corner is just out of shot to my right, it's coming up as well there. So I've got an interesting scenario here. It would be very easy to sit on a peg in the middle of the lake where that slope, if you use this section as an example, that slope is represented by this pole section, if you like, and it'd be very much like that. So it'd be easy to find a, a spot to fish, but because I've got this curved situation where the, the slope is running off up there it means that i've got to consider my plumbing up very carefully because i've got almost like a bit of a v happening here because i've got the slope running along here and then i've got the slope going off up there so i've got to actually pick my spot quite quite wisely i've got to have a good plumb around to find the spot that i want to fish anyway that's enough for me rabbiting on so i'm going to go for the 45 grammar to give me a nice positive reading if i go out there and i feel like the bottom's soft and I can't get a decent reading with this, then I'll pop the 30 gram on. But for me, I know from previous experience that it's a hard lake bed here, I'm looking at clay. Um, so the 45 gram is great. So I'm gonna pop that on. I've got the black zip in, and as you can see, there's about 10 inches or so of black zip hanging out of the pole tip, which is perfect for me. It allows me to get a nice positive reading. I'll show you more about that in a moment. So let's whiz out, and I'll show you what I mean about this V scenario and how I'm gonna pick where I want to fish because it'd be very easy for me to just go, right, that's top kit in two, plonk it in there, and that's it. But we need to think about this a bit more than that. So the first thing is about accuracy on your distance, but we'll worry about how we're gonna do that in a little while. But firstly, I need to find a spot. So again, I want this is the distance that I know that I want to fish, top kit in two, comfortable place to fish. I can throw my bait in there nice and comfortable. I also know that it's a good distance to fish on this fishery. So what I'm looking to do firstly is find a spot that suits. I want something relatively flat or on a very gentle slope. I don't want anything too steep. I don't want anything, flat is ideal, but I know I'm not gonna find that on this lake, but I want something that's not too, not too steep and not too um, uneven, if that makes sense. So what I'm looking for is what this swim offers. So let's plonk him down and straight away look, it's a little bit over depth there, but you can see I've just eased out a little bit further and it's going away ever so gently. So that's, that's fine. So we'll bring that back. That's the sort of place I want to fish. In my mind's eye, I've got a nice far bank marker. Oh, big cat just about waved off then. I've got a nice positive far bank marker in that far bank peg. So I can, I know that when I'm feeding, I'm accurate. So in an ideal world, that's where I want to fish. But if I just bring my float to the right slightly, look, it's getting shallower and shallower. It's getting really shallow there. So I've come probably a metre to the right of where I've, I was just starting to plumb up there and it's getting shallower and shallower and shallower because that slope that's on the side of the venue is coming into effect. So in a sense, I've got a slope that's coming along here and then going off around the corner. So I think that this point here, let's go to the left, see what goes on there. You see it's getting deeper. Yep, it's getting deeper. Getting deeper and deeper and deeper. So what I've got going on here is picking a spot now that suits what I'm trying to achieve. So I think that that there's a lovely little flat bit there. Just to the, it doesn't need to be big. It's like a, a foot, I'm saying. That's beautiful. As you can see, I've got a nice positive reading. There's plenty of elastic out on the pole tip. And when I drop it down, the elastic goes in. Look, do you get what I'm saying? So I can feel it, I can feel it on the bottom. It's nice and hard there. I can feel it donking. It's one little tip I'll give you. Just donk it on the bottom like that and if it sticks you know you're in silt if it doesn't which this isn't 
I'm on a perfect clay lake bed, so that's great. But I really like that, that spot there. The reason is, presentation. So let me just quickly whiz in because that's just a bit slightly too deep for me. I'll just take half an inch off. And we're looking for, a, if you want like a nice go-to um, plumbing up setup, I always plumb up to the base of the body and then go from there. So I've got that positive fire bank marker. The pole is tucked right under my elbow. There, I think that's about perfect. So just onto the body, just there, look. In fact, I'm gonna add half an inch on because the flat bit is, if you see that? So the plummet, the, the float is now almost on the bristle, which for me is just a little bit too shallow because that's relying on everything being perfect for my bait to be on the bottom in my, in my head. So I just need to add that half inch that I took off is probably it's a bit too much, so just a fraction of a centimetre back on. Let's whiz him back out. And drop him down. There, absolutely perfect. That, that with the body stuck out like that, is exactly how I, in my head, think it's, it's the right way. So, now it's a point of mapping out the swim. So, I know that, bang under my elbow like that, Bang in line with that. There's like a, a basically the peg on the far side is like two paving slabs. Bang in the middle of that is, is, is exactly where I want to fish. I know if I go out a little bit further, it's starting to go away. And then if I come in a bit closer, it's getting shallower. And I know that if I go to the left, it's getting deeper. And I know if I go to the right, it's getting shallower. So. In my head, it's sloping off like that, and then it's gradually getting deeper to the left and then coming up to the right. So I've got this perfect little situation here where almost like the two slopes meet, if that makes sense. You've got to imagine that one's coming in and that one's coming in. And I've got this little V, which is a very nice flat sort of spot to fish. And I think that that is going to be the perfect place to fish. But the reason why I'm so keen on finding out where the slopes are and how they are is how I'm going to present the rig. So, if I go to my left, it's getting deeper. If I go to my right, it's getting shallower. So with that in mind, if I was to flick my rig into the right and let it come in, you've got to assume that my hook bait is going to end up up the slope somewhere, potentially ruining my presentation. Whereas if I flick it to my left, where I know it's getting deeper, it's going to come in and then rest up where it needs to be. If that, if that makes sense. So it's always going to come in against the slope, whereas if I flicked it up the slope, it's going to get stuck on the slope somewhere and not come under the float where I need it to be to present the bait properly. So just think about that. If you've got a situation like this, where I know that the deeper water, it's getting deeper to my left, I can always flick my rig that way and it's always going to come in under my pole tip, perfect. Whereas if, because I know it's getting shallower to my right, if I flick it to my right, it's going to, like I say, get stuck on the slope somewhere. So just something to think about. Likewise, if you're fishing and it's just a slope, you haven't got this different situation going on, you've just got a steady slope, always flick your rig away from you and let it come back towards you because it's presenting the bait on the slope perfectly. If you just dump it in in a heap, no good. You're just going to end up with presentation that's all wrong. So I know, after all that's been said, my plumbing up there is fantastic. It's dead nice, really, really accurate and precise. I'm as precise as I can possibly be of, for that situation. Another little tip I can give you when plumbing up is actually allowing you, getting your plummet in the right position. Now, it's very easy when you're sat here front on, you lift your rig up, you, you ship out there and you drop your pole down and you think that is bang on. But oftentimes, and I see it so many, it, when you're looking down the line of anglers, you can see it happening so often where the plummet is well behind the pole tip, so back towards you, because you've just shipped it out, not lifted your pole up to correct the rig properly, and just sort of dumped it down. And it, it kind of just gives you a false reading, because the plummet can be a foot, 18 inches this side of your pole tip, and it, it's just all wrong. So I just want to show you what I mean by that. So what happens is, I've seen it so many times, an angler will, will go out and he'll, he'll drop it like that. And he'll be plumbing up thinking, yeah, that's really, really nice, great. And it looks great for me because I've, 
I can see, it looks great. But what you need to do is lift the rig up, let it sort of pendulum itself out, find its own straight point and then drop it down. Don't just ship out like this and just dunk, 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 because I know that that's going to be a considerable distance this side of the pole tip. Lift it up, ship out to your mark, wherever you want to fish, hold the rig up, allow the plummet and the line to straighten, because obviously it'll find its own straight point, and then lower it down. Just a little tip, but one that I see so many anglers get wrong, the fishing actually over depth because they're, letting the they're not letting the plummet actually find where it needs to be. Okay, so we're done with the plummet, we've plumbed up, we've found our spot, we know where we're fishing, we're ready to go basically. The last thing that you must do always is give yourself a point of reference to know what the depth is. Last thing you want to be doing is re-plumbing up every five minutes because your float's moved and you've got no point of reference as to how deep the swim is. So obviously on top kits nowadays, um, there's depth markers probably on them, a lot of them. I've got a Preston pole, it's got, I know it's 42 inches deep there. But if you haven't got that, you need to make a mark of it. And it's a good practice to make a mark anyway, because it's very easy to forget that it's 42 inches deep. If you've got several rigs set up like I have today, you could be thinking, oh, it's only 36 inches deep there, but really it's 42. So get yourself one of these, kit marker. They're very cheap, £1.50. Best £1.50 you'll ever spend. It'll last forever. Now, what I like to do, I know I've plumbed up to the bottom of this body float, just there, get the kit marker and then just give it a nice little mark there. It's not gonna come off, look, I can rub it, it's not gonna come off. As soon as you do want it off at the end of the session, get yourself a little towel, dip it in water, and it'll rub straight off. But there, I, even though I know it's 42 inches deep, it's just a bit over actually, but I've got that marker, I've made a nice little mark there, so I know exactly a point of reference. If I do think that something's wrong, maybe I've had a fish that's torn me through some reeds, I know the float's moved, I can just quickly hook the rig back up to the bottom of the pole, kit, the rig will align up with the pole kit and then it gives me a point of reference there that I know that I need to move my float back into position. Likewise if I want to put some depth on, maybe I want to try a little bit further out, a little bit closer in, I might need to take some off, I can just add some depth like that but I can also take some depth off and I've got a point of reference so should I need to move back into position like that, it's bang on, I'm in exactly the same spot every time. So. Great little gadget that, gonna last forever in your box. It's not a gimmick, use them. We all used to use Tipex, but Tipex, it's a nightmare to get off your pole. This is dead easy. Mark your top kits with your depth. Okay, so that's the plumbing up discussed. We've talked about the sizes of plummets, where to plumb up, how to plumb up, a few little pointers as well to help you along the way. Should we do the fun bit and see if we can catch a fish? So I've just baited it up with a pellet. I've got a few hard pellets in my pot. You notice I just dunk the pole tip there to make sure that the pellets all sink. Because sometimes when you get hard pellets, they uh, get sort of stuck in the surface tension. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to tap them in right on my marker. And then remember we talked about presentation. I know it's getting deeper to my left, so I want to swing my hook bait to the left. So I'm just going to flick that out there. And then bring the pole float back over my marker. And it's just swinging in there now, nice and accurate. And it's going to end up right where I wanted it to be. Alternatively, you can just lift it the last few inches. I can see that's come underneath my pole float now, and I can just lower it down. And I'm right where I need to be now. I'm on that slope. I know it's presented nicely against the slope. Perfect. We can just sit there now over that little pile of pellets and wait for some action. There we go, didn't take long at all. So we've done everything right. We've plumbed up dead accurate. We've fed nice and accurate. We've presented the rig properly by flicking it into the deep and letting it come into the shallow. I think we've been rewarded with a nice little fish there straight away. Little F1, great fish. Perfectly demonstrates what we're talking about. There we go, nice fish. So we've been rewarded with our first fish of the session. And I think it's right to call it rewarding because we've put the hard work in, we've got our plumbing dead right, and as you can see, fish is ne neatly hooked in the lip. Lovely sort of ghost F1, really fat actually, popping back. But what we've done there, we've, done, we've, we've put the hard work in, we've plumbed up accurately, we've used the right plummets, we've found the right place to fish in our swim by looking at the contours of the bottom, 
And we've just sat there for 30 seconds and the floats walloped under and we've caught an F1 immediately. Just show you how simple it can be. Get it right, get the basics right, and you'll catch loads more fish on the pole, trust me.